Naim Borilusus. Uh, we will talk about the spirochades. Spirochades are long, flexible spiral motile bacteria. Uh, uh, some uh, species are pathogenic. Triponema cause Cephalus yaus bejel penta, led to spiral wheels disease, Borrelia relapsing fever, and Lyme disease. Uh, introduction disease is caused by Borrelia, direct etiology, Lyme disease, acrodermatitis chronica atrophicans, and lymphocytoma cutis, possible etiology, erythema chronica, migraines, and um, benign lymphocytic infiltrate of Gisner, uh, some types of morphia, lichen sclerosis atrophicus, progressive facial hemiatrophy of Perry Romberg, and uh, Schalman syndrome, xenophilic fasciades. Uh, now we will talk about the Borrelia, Borrelia burgdorferi. It is transmitted to men by hard, thick uh, bites, uh, exudus. Clinically, the, uh, the Lyme disease, uh, the etiology is Borrelia burgdorferi, transmitted to men by hard, thick bite, exudus. There, is, uh, there are three stages, stage one, two, and three. Stage one, Three to 30 days after the tech bites, uh, erythema chronica migraines. The erythema chronica migraines, after the tech bite, there is erythematous papule that gradually enlarges, and um, after that, it, uh, it uh, spreads, forming annular configuration with central clearing. After that, it heals spontaneously within weeks, two months. Uh, later, there is also, or sometimes there is associated multiple annular lesions, urticaria, malar, erythema, periorbital swelling, rarely. Other manifestations, regional lymphadenopathy and mild constitutional symptoms, conjunctivitis, testicular swelling, headache, arthralgia, neck stiffness, and hepatitis. This is the first stage, the erythema chronica migraines, which is a, pap a papule that gradually enlarging, forming annular configuration with central clearing. A picture of erythema chronica migraines. Stage two, after two to seven months, neurological manifestations, 15%, heart disease, 10%, myalgia and arthralgia, and lymphocytoma cutis. The uh, neurological disorders, there is meningitis and cranial pulses, like facial pul uh, palsy, and uh, heart disease, AV block and myocarditis, Myalgia and arthralgia, especially muscle and joint next to erythema chronica migraine site, and lymphocytoma cutis. Lymphocytoma cutis, typical sites are the ear lobes and areola. Uh, they are viricious nodules or erythematous or cyanotic, which is asymptomatic, tend to grow uh, for uh, several months and then remain stationary for several years and then finally disappear. So this is the lymphocytoma cutis. The, the second stage, there is neurological symptoms, heart uh, disease, and myalgia, arthralgia, and lymphocytoma cutis. This is the figure of the lymphocytoma cutis. Third stage, chronic arthritis. It is for after weeks or years. There is chronic arthritis, oligoarticular, mainly large joints, and there is neurological uh, chronic symptoms, and there is acrodermatitis chronica atrophicans. So the uh, chronic arthritis, oligoarticular, mainly large joints like knees and wrists. Uh, symptoms, they are present all days and absent characteristics of rheumatoid arthritis. There is no morning stiffness, no subcutaneous nodules or rheumatoid factor or, or affection of many joints. Second, the neurological symptoms as stage two but become chronic. The acrodermatitis chronica atrophicans. Uh, this is a late skin manifestations of Lyme disease, age 30 to 60 years, begins as painless erythematous or bluish nodules and plaques, mainly on the extensors that slowly extend to the trunk for several months, leading to atrophic scars. Skin is smooth, hairless, and giving tissue paper appearance. There is pseudoscleroderma that may develop in the dorsum of the feet. So this is the third stage after weeks or years. And we will see here
pictures of that acrodermatitis chronica atrophicans as we can see here here late tenuous atrophy and so this is the uh, third stage of Lyme disease there is stage 1 3 to 30 days erythema chronica migraines stage 2 2 to 7 months neurological disorders heart disease myalgia arthritis lymphocytoma cutis and stage 3 weeks to years chronic arthritis oligoarthritis and chronic neurological symptoms and acrodermatitis chronica atrophicans Diagnosis of Lyme disease. Diagnosis of Lyme disease, uh, first demonstration of spirochetes in tissues or culture of the, uh, or, and, uh, or, uh, and culture of the organism from either the tissue, blood, joint, fluid, vitreous fluid, CSF. Most specific test, uh, stain with Gimza stain, gram negative, or uh, Warthrin starry silver stain or modified stainer stain. Uh, the culture, barbour stoner kelly medium, barbour stoner kelly medium, and uh, indirect uh, fluorescence and ELISA using whole Borrelia burgdorferi cells or fractions like the 41 kilodalton uh, periplasmic flagellate uh, associated antigen or the outer membrane protein. ELISA is more sensitive and uh, specific than indirect immunofluorescence. An immunoperoxidase slide test or heme agglutination. This is a quantitative fluorescence immuno, uh, immunoassay, a rapid quant, uh, qualitative slide test immunoclone. There are false, false negative tests as syphilis, relapsing fever, and other spirochetal disease, rheumatic uh, diseases, and infectious mononucleosis. So this is the diagnosis of Lyme disease, demonstration of spirochetes in tissues and culture of the organism from tissue blood joint fluid, vitreous fluid, and CSF, stained by Gemza and Warther story, uh, silver stain, culture barbour stoner kelly medium, indirect and ELISA using whole Borrelia burgdorferi cells or fractions like uh, 41 kelly Dalton um, flagellate protein, and uh, 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 immunopyroxidase slide test or heme agglutination. There is false negative test in syphilis and relapsing fever and other spirochetal diseases and rheumatic diseases, infectious mononucleosis. This is how we diagnose the disease, the Lyme disease. The treatment is penicillin. Antibiotic treatment when started at early stage is quite effective. We can, early we can, uh, there is no evidence of bacterial dissemination, like solitary erythema chronica migraines lesions. We give amoxicillin or doxycycline, amoxicillin 500 to 1000 milligram three times daily, and doxycycline 100 milligram two to three times daily for three weeks. Erythromycin is uh, less effective. If there is systemic disease, we give rosifen, kiftriaxone, two grams daily intravenously for two weeks, or benzyl penicillin, uh, 2.4 million unit daily for two to three weeks. And there is prophylactic treatment following tick bites. So the treatment, the main treatment is penicillin, but early we can give amoxicillin or doxycycline. Uh, systemic we can give also rosifin. This is the treatment of the Lyme disease. Here we can say the host response the host response after the tick bite, Borrelia burgdorferi, is disseminated through the hematogenous route, leading to generalized infection. The humoral response develops several weeks into the course of the disease and can be uh, aborted by early treatment. There is early immunoglobulin M production, third to six weeks during erythema chronica migraines eruption, but less specific. Later, there's immunoglobulin G production in later stages, second or third stage of neuritis and arthritis. Uh, the uh, early antibody response is against the 41 kilodalton flagellar component, which is non-specific, and the late antibody response is against 34 kilodalton polypeptide. 
So the humoral response developed several weeks into the course of the disease and can be aborted by early treatment. There is immunoglobulin early, immunoglobulin M, third to six weeks during erythema chronica migraines, later immunoglobulin G, in the second or third neuritis and arthritis, and the early, it is against the 41 kilodalton flagellar component, and the late is against 34 4 kilodalton polypeptide. The cell-mediated immunity response is important. Early, there is a stimulation of T suppressor cell, but later there is suppression of T suppressor cells. There is interleukin-1 and immune complexes and complement activation. There is a note in pregnant woman, Lyme disease causes miscarriage. And this is the host response to the Lyme disease, humoral response, cell-mediated response. There is two notes on another type of uh, folliculites. There is the perforating folliculites, and the, there is also the um, xenophilic pustular folliculites. These types of folliculites we'll talk about. Perforating folliculites. It is asymptomatic or slightly pruritic follicular papules, discrete erythematous with central, tightly adherent whitish keratinous plug that may be pierced by hair. Removal of the plug uh, leaves small bleeding crater. Lesions develop slowly weeks to months and heal with hypopigmented spots or shallow scars. Periods of remissions and exacerbations can alternate over months or years. There's mainly on the limbs, especially hairy parts, and of young adults of both sexes. A similar condition is associated with renal disease and diabetes. It's called acquired perforating dermatosis. Etiology is unknown. Histopathology, dilated follicle, which are plugged by keratin. Follicular epithelium shows one or more perforations into the derms. Treatment, no specific treatment yet, but topical keratin keratinolytics and uh, keratolytics and tretinoin, systemic isotretinoin, and PUVA. This is the perforating folliculites. The isophenic pustular folliculites, it is chronic, usually pruritic grouped follicular papules and pustules, which are sterile. Lesions may extend pe uh, peripherally with center clearing or forming annular lesions by confluence and healing with slight pigmentation. It occurs on the face, trunk, and upper arms, upper outer arms, males more than females, 5 to 1, reported in AIDS patient, and uh, mild xenophilia may be present. The histopathology follicles uh, highly inf uh, heavily infiltrated with xenophils and necrosis, uh, leading to necrosis and degeneration of the outer root sheath. Treatment by Dapson, systemic steroid or topical steroid, and non-steroidal anti- uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So this is the two types of uh, folliculites, perforating folliculites and isomophilic pustular folliculites. Follicular occlusion triad. It's a chronic recurrent deep-seated folliculites forming abscess and sinus formation and scarring. We want uh, first to give a, a hint on the apocrine glands. They are androgen-dependent uh, after puberty, and uh, they, present, they are present in axilla, breast, and genitalia. Uh, 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 the, uh, the follicular occlusion triad is a chronic recurrent deep-seated folliculites forming abscesses and sinus formation, leading to scarring. The uh, triad is formed of hybridinite separativa, axillary and inogenital region more in female, acne, conglobata, back and chest, perifolliculites, capitis, abscidens, e, saphodens, or the secting cellulites of the scalp, scalp only in men. And actually there is a, a tetrod also uh, pioneal sinus. Okay, and uh, this is the follicular occlusion triad formed by hydrogenized separativa, acne conglobata, and dissecting cellulites of the scalp, the pathogenesis of which are follicular occlusion with retention of the follicular products uh, appears to be the initiating events in all three diseases, and there is association between these diseases in some cases. Second is uh, primary bacterial infection of the follicle, Staph aureus, uh, anaerobic strip and bacteroids, but cultures are often negative. Hormonal effects, the conditions uh, uh, occur after puberty, improvement with pregnancy, and become worsened with premenstrual and with oral contraceptives. Immune defects, there is decreased T lymphocytes that exist in some patients, 
with hydrogenase suppurativa, and there is antigen antibody reactions uh, leading to tissue uh, breakdown. There is inflammatory response. So the follicular occlusion triad, hydrogenase suppurativa, acne conglobata, perifocalized capitis epsidens, esophodens, or dissecting cellulites of the scalp. The pathogenesis of which is follicular occlusion, bacterial infection, hormonal effect, immune defects, and uh, uh, we will talk about the hydrodenite suppurativa. The hydrodenite suppurativa, it begins after puberty, commonly in females. The sites of axillary and anogenital region, the buttocks where the upper crying glands are present, and is, uh, there is a small red tender subcutaneous nodules that become flocculent and become chronic and indolent due to subcutaneous extension. Rupture and sinuses discharging pus occurs. Healing occurs with scar formation. The histopathology, perifolliculites with extensive infiltrate composed of neutrophils, lymphoid cells, histiocytes, and foreign body giant cells leading to destruction of follicles. The treatment, it's actually according to the uh, pathogenesis. The treatment, uh, infection, we give antibiotic. Immune, we give uh, oral systemic steroid. And hormonal, we give oral contraceptives. Uh, follicular occlusion, we give uh, uh, isotretinoin. And the last thing, we, sometimes there is... Uh, from scarring, we, we make surgery to refractory resistant cases. So the treatment is uh, appropriate antibiotic for two weeks, erythromycin and metronidazole or clindamycin or long-term tetracyclines as uh, uh, acne vulgaris, systemic corticosteroid prednisone 60 mg daily, oral contraceptive containing 50 mg ethrine estradiol may be useful, uh, isotretinoin for four months or better etretinate or acetretin, and surgery in the refractory resistant cases. This is the hydrotinite suppurativa, which begins at puberty, commonly in females, especially axillary and anogenital region, and it is small, red, tender, subcutaneous nodules that become flatulent, uh, boils, then uh, sinuses, and scarring. This is a picture of the multiple abscess on the axilla with stage 1 hydrotinite suppurativa. No fibrosis yet. And you can see here more advanced case with uh, multiple interconnected science tracts with severe fibrosis, as we can see here. Finally, uh, I will give some uh, notes, silent notes. Pyoderma is infection of epidermis just below stratum corium and petigo and in hair follicle folliculites. Uh, Untreated superficial pyderma uh, in the derms result in ecthyma and pharyncal formation. And this is the treatment of impetigo we said before. And there is some diseases also. This is a note, another note. Dermatites associated systemic diseases, familial and linear disease, hyperimmunoglobulin E syndrome, Wiscott Aldrich syndrome, and chronic granulomatous disease. These are some of the that diseases that we're talking about. And also, I want to give a, some questions that we could, could be asked in the bacterial diseases. A hint also on some antibiotics that you're using. Systemic and topical antibiotics. And with that, we finish the bacterial infections.